Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Wahoo in the boat, baby! That's a solid kingfish right there. Yeah! Nice dolphin. There we go. That's dolphin trolling for you. looking to get into jigging, but you might not necessarily know how to do it, what type of jigging you want to do, or generally just how to get started. Well, in this episode, we're going to clarify a lot of these answers about jigging, and we're going to go over the difference between vertical jigging and slow pitch jigging. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. All right, folks, so we got some questions to answer about jigging. Like I said, we're going to go over the difference between vertical jigging and slow pitch jigging. So to start out, I want to go over the basic concepts of what they are. Vertical jigging, also known as high speed jigging, is described as the simulation of a bait fish trying to escape prey while racing upwards through the water column. Slow pitch jigging is described as technically bottom fishing, mimicking a injured bait fish trying to retrieve from the seabed floor. So if you're saying, hey, isn't jigging just jigging? No, it's not. Vertical jigging and slow pitch jigging are two entirely different things. And the gear is different and the jigs are different. And as you're gonna see, the fish that you're targeting are different too. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about, since we're talking about the main difference of it, is the technique. Vertical jigging is a rhythm. You're gonna to have to learn to get into it. You wanna be in constant motion, trying to keep a straight up and down presentation. You gotta to learn to keep your line moving. One of the key factors of vertical jigging is you are reeling in on the fall of the jig, never trying to let your line go slack. You're always pumping and winding, pumping and winding, pumping and winding. Now sometimes you do give a big pump and you reel on the wind down, pump, reel on the wind down, pump, reel on the wind down, but you're never really letting your jig do like a flutter and fall. It's constantly in motion, racing up towards the surface. Like I said, you're fishing the water column. Slow pitch jigging is totally different. The main factor of slow pitch jigging, other than the fact that you're bottom fishing, is you never want to reel on the fall. You want to pitch the jig, and let it fall and flutter to the ground. Come tight, pitch, and let it fall. So as you can see, they're two totally different techniques. Vertical jigging, you're gonna get the strike on the windup a lot, and it's a vicious strike. Slow pitch jigging, more times than not, you're gonna get hit on the fall, and you won't even know you have a fish until you come tight again. So these are two entirely different techniques, as you can see. Now, at the same time, like I said, you're gonna get into a rhythm doing vertical jigging. And I feel like slow pitch jigging is more of the imitation of the bait. Okay, so now that we've gone over the basic concepts, I want to go over the differences in gear. But before we get into the gear, I want to explain one thing. The common factor for all jigging is braid. You need braid so that your jig can act properly when under pressure and being retrieved. If you have monofilament, your monofilament will stretch when you go to jig and it will not make the jig do what it is technologically designed to do under the pressure of water. All right, so the first thing we're gonna go over is your standard slow pitch jigging setup. And that's what this is. Typically when you're slow pitch jigging, I like to use a conventional reel. And it is on a slow pitch jigging rod. Kind of looks like a bass rod, but it's not. Trust me, it is super tough. This blank is meant to withstand a lot of pressure, okay? You can see the parabolic bend it gets, and it's pliable like that so that you can actually, you know, pitch your jig and let it fall. This rod does several things. It works the jig. The next thing the rod does with this pliability is it helps set the hook. It has shock absorbency. It will not yank the hook out of the fish's mouth upon the strike. So what this setup is, is this is an accurate, 
from the Boss Fury series of 600N, 600 narrow. And it's spooled with 30 pound J braid, 900 yards of J braid on this one little reel. That's right, 2,700 feet. The rod that it is on is a 78 inch star rod from the Plasma 2 series. As you can see, the guides are what's called spiral wrapped, meaning they start up on top right here and they wrap counterclockwise towards the tip. What this technically does is it keeps your line from touching the blank upon the strike of a fish as your rod bends over in that parabolic fashion. Like I said, slow pitch rods look fairly wimpy and skinny, but they are all of mighty and tough. They are made for slow pitch jigging. They're not made for vertical jigging because they are too shock absorbent. So when it comes to the leader that I'm using on this particular outfit, I have about 15 feet of 40 pound fluorocarbon on it. You don't need much leader when you're slow pitch jigging. I believe you don't need much leader when you're doing any type of jigging. And I have a connecting knot that is an Alberto knot, which fastens my leader directly to my main line. Okay, and now we're gonna go over a little bit of my vertical jigging setup. This is Penn Battle 5000. Kind of small, but I like it light so that I can sit there and I can jig all day. The heavier the setup, the more stiffer the rod, and you can do it, but you might end up getting worn out if you're not in shape. And so here's the other setup that I was talking about, the heavier gear. You know, like I said, if you're not in shape, you're not used to that rhythm of jigging, especially for long periods of time, it could wear you out. The reel's a little heavier, the rod's a little heavier. But yes, as you can see, this is a shorter rod. This here is a 66 inch rod, but it's got some pliability on it, but it's still a little bit stiffer. And the reel is, you know, a little bit heavier duty. But personally, I like the lighter gear when it comes to vertical jigging. So, as you can see, I'm showing you spinners instead of conventional reels. For me, vertical jigging is way more easily accomplished and to get into that rhythm and that dance and that consistent motion when using a spinner. So the same thing, we've got braid. This particular setup, my lighter setup, has 12 pound braid and I've got 20 pound fluorocarbon on it. About 15 feet, the same amount. And again, the rod that this is on is very pliable for when you get a strike. It's gonna bend over and it's gonna help set the hook so that you don't yank the hook out of the fish's mouth when you are getting ready to retrieve it upon the strike. Now, I'm not saying you can't use stiff rods. I've used stiff rods and gotten into hookups and I, you know, pulling fish like amberjack and large false albacore, stuff like that with it. But if you're looking to really secure that bite upon the strike, you're going to want the rod to have some shock absorbency to it. And before we move on, I want to talk a little bit about the rigging. Typically, when you're slow pitch jigging, you either have just a solid ring or a barrel swivel hooked up to the end of your leader. When you're vertical jigging, you usually have your hook tied directly to the end of the leader either a single hook just like this or a pair of double hooks like this. And like I said, very important, you're gonna to wanna to learn how to tie the Alberto knot. It's a safe and secure, super strong, streamlined knot that flows through your guides without getting hung up and it's strong enough to take on very large fish. Okay, so now that we've covered the concept and the gear and a little bit of the rigging, I want to talk about the difference between the types of jigs. So this is your standard knife jig used for vertical jigging. All it has on the tip of it is a split ring. Like I said, your hook is hooked to your main line of your leader and all you do is you attach your jig to your hook. You can swap out jigs all day. This is your typical slow pitch jig. Now, as you can see, it has four hooks on it, two sets of top two sets at the bottom and both sets are hooked up with split rings so that you just hook them to the solid ring now you heard me talk about split rings and split ring pliers these are a pair of split ring pliers it's called that because it has this little tooth right here and what it does is it pinches it and it opens up the little split ring which is basically a miniature sized key ring if you're doing any sort of jigging you're going to want to get used to using these that way you can swap out your jigs 
easily and in a timely fashion all day long without having to use something like your fingernail and risk breaking it or sticking a screwdriver in there and trying to wedge it open. These pliers are made specifically for that type of purpose. They're going to prevent injury and they're going to help you switch out your jig and get back in the water fishing. So as I said, we've got vertical jig and we've got slow pitch jig. The vertical jig is meant to race up through the water, bobbing and weaving, jigging and jigging as you're racing it up towards the surface to entice the bite from a fish that is hunting. Slow pitch jig, you pitch and it falls and twists and it turns and it acts erratic. Pitch and it falls and twists and it turns and it acts erratic. Another one of the key differences between vertical jigging and slow pitch jigging. Vertical jigging is typically going after fish that are actively hunting. Slow pitch jigging is almost meant to entice a fish that is at rest to feed because of the easy opportunity presented. And now I want to go over another key difference between vertical jigging and slow pitch jigging. And that is the fish you're going to catch. So we'll start out with vertical jigging. More often than not, when I'm vertical jigging, I've caught amberjack and false albacore and the occasional tuna and the very rare kingfish or barracuda. A lot of times I'll say, hey, if I'm going out and I'm looking for bait and I want to catch false albacore, vertical jigging will get them into the bite. It can get them frenzied up. They're feeding up in the water column a lot of times. Slow pitch jigging is one of those techniques where you literally never know what you're going to get. I've caught everything from unexpected odd fish like lizard fish and trigger fish to more desirable fish like mutton snapper, king mackerel, and blackfin tuna. I catch all these types of fish regularly. And on occasion, you are gonna hook a big old shark. The great thing about slow pitch jigging is you really never know what you're gonna get. I've even landed two mutton snapper at one time on a slow pitch jig. So basically what I'm trying to get at is there's more of a variety, more of the unknown factor when it comes to slow pitch jigging as to what you're gonna get into the bite with. If you're asking me, I like traveling into the unknown and being surprised with slow pitch jigging more often than vertical jigging. However, if I'm out targeting something and I know what I wanna go for, I would choose vertical jigging. All right, so all this information is good and fun, and we've painted a picture of the differences between vertical jigging and slow pitch jigging. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take you out on a boat. We're going to do a little bit of vertical jigging to get this started off with. Um, we're hooked up. That's as easy as that. First drop, hooked up. Typically, you're going for bonitas, amberjacks, tuna. That the leader, top shot as they call it, 30 foot yards of 40 pound mono. Here comes my fish. Big ol' amberjack, look at that. Big ol' AJ. You get him in the boat. Oh, shark gets him. Oh! 
That's how you do that. So this is 20 pound braid on this reel. I have a backer of monofilament that's 12 pound test. So I put 300 yards of 20 pound braid on it. My leader is 40 pound fluorocarbon. Here comes our fish. So there you had it. That was some good old fashioned fishing fun with vertical jigging. Like I said, you know, nice amberjack, false albacore, and that's pretty much what you're gonna end up with when you're doing high speed vertical jigging. Now, we're gonna show you the difference. You're gonna get to see the difference in the technique hands on. We're gonna take you back out on the boat. We're gonna do a little bit of slow pitch jigging. All right, here we go. Ground contact, give it a couple pulls, see if we can get in. Patience plays a factor. He's doing some death spirals. We shall see what we got. And it looks like we got a black moon tuna. Got a nice black one. I'm gonna have to gaff it. This is the power of slow digging right here. Oh boy, yeah, yeah, he's a nice, he's not, this is not a little football team. And there we go, look at that black fin tuna right there. Right for the bottom. Just 
can be a shark. Kind of heavy like that. Game. Gotta break that spirit. Turn him on his side. Every inch. Down there again, making the approach. Still about 30, 40 feet away. Last thing I want to do is force them up. Definitely going to be one of the more epic fish. There you had it, some more exciting fishing fun. Nothing like, you know, solid kingfish, nice blackfin tuna, and like I said, big sharks sometimes. All right, folks, and so there you have it, the basis of comparison. Vertical jigging versus slow pitch jigging. And again, it's not like I'm saying one is better than the other. There's complete differences. They're different ball games. They're different worlds. They may as well be fishing in different oceans, but it's both jigging, it's both fishing, and it's meant to be exciting and fun if done properly, and the commitment is made to just get out there and do it. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed, and I hope you learned the difference between vertical jigging and slow pitch jigging. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us. Thank <laughs> you.